Hi everyone! I'm Miss Katie from Rockland Public Library and today we're going to be reading the last book on the Chickadee nominee list. That means after this I'll be posting a chance for everyone to vote for their very favorite on the Kids' Choice Awards this year. So today's book is Kiyoshi's Walk. Kiyoshi's Walk is written by Mark Carlins and illustrated by Nicole Wong. Let's see what happens. Here they are in the city. Here's Kiyoshi and his grandfather. Kiyoshi watched his grandfather, the wise poet Eto, write a poem with brush and ink. The brush flicked across the page. The dripping faucet takes me back to my old home. Raindrops on fog pond. Do you see the poem right here? Here it is, it's one, two, three lines long. It's a haiku. The words made Kiyoshi smile. He wished he could make poems too. Where do poems come from? He asked. Eto put his brush and ink away. Let's go for a walk, he said. Oh, look, they're saying bye-bye to their kitty cat. Bye, kitty. He tucked his pen and paper in his pocket and took Kiyoshi's hand. They walked by the store on the corner. The sun shone out from behind a cloud. Who did Kiyoshi find? Is there a kitty? Watch out, kitty. It's on top of a very tall pile of oranges. Uh-oh, what's happened? Eto stopped and wrote, Hill of orange suns, Cat leaps, oranges tumble, The cat licks his paw. Do you see another one, two, three lined poem? Another haiku. Kiyoshi felt puzzled. Wait, does this mean poems come from seeing things? They kept walking. Kiyoshi noticed the flower growing out of a crack in the sidewalk and a girl whooshing by on roller skates. Can you see them? They're very tiny, so it's hard to see. But here's the flower and the girl on roller skates. Then flap, flap, flap. At a noise, Kiyoshi and Eto looked up. Eto wrote, the sky calls to us, pigeons, the whir of feathers. Our arms could be wings. Oh, said Kiyoshi, you find poems from listening. They passed by an old house with a tall wall around it. They peeked through the crack but could only see a stuffed bear on the ground. Eto took out his pen and wrote, his boy moved away, lying by the empty house, a lonely bear waits. Yes, said Kiyoshi, poems come from your imagination. You see? They found this bear, but the grandfathers made up the story about who might have owned it. So what do you think? Do poems come from what you see? What you hear? What you imagine? Finally, Kiyoshi and Eto reached the river. Eto sat under a tree while Kiyoshi fed crackers to some of the ducks. He felt a damp breeze as the sun drifted lower. Two children reeled in their kites and left the park. Kiyoshi felt a little lonely. He told his grandfather. Eto wrote one more poem, his hand a shadow in the fading light. Dark sky, colored moon, back at home, his mother's voice, a tired, boy 
dreams. I know something else, Kiyoshi said. Our feelings also make poems. The wind sighed through the leaves. A boat full of people floated past, its lights glowing on the water. Eto touched Kiyoshi's hand. Now, do you understand where poems come from? He asked. Kiyoshi thought for a few seconds. They come from here, he said, and opened his arms wide to take in the river and the sky and the distant buildings. And they come from here, he said, and pointed to his own heart. Yes, said Eto. They come from the way the two things here and here come together. He brought his hands close, touching one another. They sat for a moment in silence. May I write a poem? Kiyoshi asked. Eto nodded. Kiyoshi took a deep breath and he wrote, in the cool spring night, the wind's dance makes me shiver. Your voice keeps me warm. Eto wrote his grandfather's poem. Oh, sorry, Eto read his grandson's poem and he smiled. Kiyoshi slipped his hand into his grandfather's. Under the street light, they began their long walk home and everything there was a poem. The faces of the people, the sound of the river, the moon breaking from the clouds. The end. And there's a little note from the author in the back. It says, my own life as a writer began with poetry. I wondered like Kiyoshi, how to find poems of my own and how to write them. Kiyoshi and Eto are both fictional characters, but their poems called haiku are a traditional form that originated in Japan. The most famous writer of haikus was Basho, a Japanese poet who lived from 1644 to 1694. I like to think that Eto is similar to Basho in that they are both seen as keen observers of the world. Haikus do not use rhyme. So we do a lot of, a lot of poetry with rhymes, but these poems don't need to rhyme. And they often concentrate on ordinary or unpoetic things like taking a walk or brushing your teeth, popping toast in a toaster or crumbling the newspaper, a crumbly newspaper that blows down the street. The focus is on movement, and often the final line in the haiku has an unexpected image or a surprise. So it focuses on regular everyday things and looks at the beauty in them, and also maybe ends with a little surprise. A haiku is always written in three lines. We saw that in the book, didn't we? Three lines of poetry. Haikus in English commonly have five syllables in the first line, then seven in the second, and five in the third, with a total of 17 syllables. In the original Japanese, it's not syllables that matter, but the sound. In English, some poet, poets reflect this by choosing a looser style, writing three lines of poems that do not conform to the 575 pattern, but capture the spirit of haiku by focusing on nature, spontaneity, and the simplicity of expression. Usually created by a single poet, haikus can become part of a game-like form called a renga, in which two or more people write linked poems. Haikus can also include paintings and calligraphy. If you look with a poet's eye, everything becomes poetry. That's a beautiful note from our author today. So what do you think about the book we just read? We learned a little bit about haikus and about poetry. Maybe you can even give it a try today. See if you can write a short poem. 
and see if that poem comes from what you see, what you hear, what you imagine, and what you feel. I hope you all enjoyed this story today and I will soon be posting a poll for everyone to vote. I invite everyone, young and old, from anywhere in, in our world to give a vote. But if you are a homeschooler or another uh, K through four that lives in Maine and you want to officially vote, I have my email down below and you can send an email to me so you can vote and I can submit it to the state. I hope you all had a wonderful time reading these chickadee books and I can't wait to see what the winner is of the Kids' Choice Awards this year. I hope you all have a wonderful week and you're having a happy spring. Bye-bye. <laughs>